Welcome to Add to Cart, the show where we celebrate creativity and commerce. For our second season, I decided to do something radically different. I walked into my pantry, found some of my favorite products, and decided to pursue the founders of those products to come tell us their stories. And one of those products was Quinn, a salty snack brand that has completely reimagined all of your favorite crunchy treats. And today I am incredibly excited to have Christy Lewis, the founder of Quinn, on the show. Welcome, Christy. Yeah, thanks for having me, Liz. I'm really excited to talk all things snacking today. Me too. And one of the things that a lot of people maybe don't know about your brand or uh, if they've never tried your brand would love to learn is what exactly is a reimagined microwave, popcorn, snack, the farm to bag bag of popcorn. Yeah. Tell us about it. Yeah, 100%. So microwave popcorn reimagined, which we started with microwave popcorn reinvented, um, which was essentially take out all the artificial and the natural flavorings and just use real food. Um, we stripped the bag of the chemicals, the susceptor, you know, that kind of like metal plastic yes. patch. Um, we took it all out, right? And so then you end up with a paper bag, just purely paper. Um, what we did with the purely paper bag was to put organic popcorn kernels in there. So when you put it in the microwave popcorn, you're literally just popping the popcorn kernels. You take it out, pour over the oils that we provide you. So we use high oleic sunflower oil, and then you pour over a seasoning pouch. So we essentially stripped all of it because we wanted to put back real food. It is the first cl truly clean microwavable popcorn. Yep. It was the first product you brought to market. Mm -hmm. You have since brought many more delicious, healthy alternatives to classic snacks to market. Mm -hmm. Tell people what some of those classic snacks are. Yep, so we launched um, into pretzels in 2016. So we have a line of whole grain gluten-free pretzels made with sorghum. So the, the, the first and only whole grain line of gluten-free products. And then in 2019, we launched um, our peanut butter filled uh, gluten-free nugget which was really out of my need <laughs> wanting Is it your favorite yes. product right now? 100%. <laughs> um, so we, uh, we essentially really are taking classic snacks um, and reimagining them and then also leading with gluten-free, right? So all of our products are actually gluten-free. Talk to me about the, the origin story of the microwave popcorn at Quid. Yeah, so I um, brought home some popcorn, hated it, and then I essentially read an article one day about how you could pop popcorn in a brown paper bag. So bought some kernels, popped it, did like the whole Parmesan and rosemary mm -hmm. and butter, and it was incredible. And then I kept obsessing about this, like if I could do this, why wasn't it in the market? And so fast forward about eight years later, I was pregnant with Quinn, um, had to take a leave of absence because I was so sick. I had, you know, maternity leave. And three days after, I realized, like, oh my gosh, it's now or never. I finally have time off. So I just kind of jumped in. And the concept was to take out all the synthetics, the chemicals, um, and really start with like a pure, so it's pure pop. We have it patented, so it's pure pop microwave bag. And mm -hmm. it's essentially just paper with no coatings. Um, it's biodegradable in like 18 weeks. Um, so super exciting. And then we added, um, you know, organic popcorn kernels and, and uh, you Beautiful pour Beautiful flavors. Over. Yeah. Yes. So that's kind of, you know, the genesis of, of Quinn. And this is a brand that is now 12 years old way before DTC, way before e-commerce was a massive trend. You're really pre a lot of online, even e-commerce grocery shopping. Yeah. You couldn't just start your own website. You had to partner with others. So how did you go about the process of getting this product in people's hands? You really hone in on something. I mean, no one was doing this, right? So right. we had to source paper from Germany, which was like eight months. And I mean, this was literally like Googling and then phoning a friend of a friend of a friend. Yes. Like it's like a wild goose chase, right? So while we were doing that, we launched on Kickstarter. So I think the Kickstarter piece is really critical because this was kind of our foray into um, kind of online Abe's Market platform sure. and this New York Times article that we got. And we were like, oh my God, this is like the best thing ever, but you can't buy it anywhere. Like right. we weren't selling it anywhere yet. So you had but to find someone else who already had a website yeah. to sell your product. 100%. Quickly, quickly, it's quickly. It's like the best PR ever and then yes. you have nowhere to sell yeah. it. Yeah. And so you put it on Abe's Market, they start selling some of your products. 
And how, tell me about those first couple of years. How's it go? Yeah, so Abe's market does well, nothing crazy. I mean, the, the micro, we had no data, right? And so, like, we knew that the category was about a billion dollars. We had no idea that, you know, Walmart owned 30% of that. Right. Hmm. Um, and so we're trying to build this microwave popcorn brand in natural. And we started with Whole Foods. So Whole Foods was our biggest um, and first customer. They believed in it. And so we spent pretty much the first three years demoing the shit out of this popcorn product. Um, and we'd have contests and weekends. And it resonated definitely enough to get national distribution at one point. And then in 2016, we had the opportunity to launch into pretzels. Um, and so we actually made the decision to take microwave popcorn out of Whole Foods with the buyer and really push pretzels. Hmm. Um, because at this point, we had an understanding of where the market was. The market's being sold in conventional, especially with you know microwave popcorn. Um, the category is really about a $10 million category in natural. And instead of saying, well, $10 million, oh, that's big enough, you're going, no, it's not big enough. I want a bigger category. Yeah. That's where pretzels began. That's where pretzels began because the, the pretzel category is big and the microwave popcorn category, we, we really started pushing that into Target and Kroger, right? And then we launched into this peanut butter nugget. Um, which, which is up there. It's one of my favorite is, things of all time. Which essentially saved the business because no one has come, has been able to get into this category because um, the gluten-free is so challenging to make for a filled nugget. I think the lesson here for folks who are watching is to realize that one, you've just got to keep going. I mean, just that was seven going. years of product yeah. development, listening to customers, trying different markets, trying different shoppers. But it's also the importance of continuing to bring new products to the market. You kept developing products that were in line with a core hypothesis about what people want to eat. Yep. And that hypothesis is what now? At Quinn, when you think about what's the, what's the true north? I think just focused on cla the classic snacks, right? So the ch child of the mm -hmm. 80s, right? Um, and then just... And it's so basic. I mean, this isn't rocket science, right? It's like simple food. Create simple food, know where it's coming from. And, and you know, our whole mantra is be better, do better. So, but yeah, so I think our true north is really just focused on creating a salty snack line that's truly good for you, good for the planet. Um, and that's all, you know, that's pretty much what we're focused on, right? We can go into anything, but that's really kind of our mission. What I find really interesting about your story that can be instructive for folks is you didn't just say, well, let me launch one direct-to-consumer mm -hmm. channel. You went for the entire spectrum of channels in order to do what? How does being on so many channels make your business either more successful or how does it just play in your strategy? Yeah, testing and, and learning is something that is critical when you're a small brand and honestly critical when you're a medium and large brand because you you don't really know what's gonna work, right? So D to C clearly requires a ton of money, um, a ton of capital, a ton of bandwidth, um, which we never had ever. Um, so I think we started D to C early on, like back in 2014. But we always knew that you know that was a place where our consumers could, the loyalists, right, who could sure. come and buy from us. But um, we never were capitalized to really push it, and we've made this conscious de decision uh, to lean into Amazon um, because that is where the consumer hmm. is. Um, and so we're finding success in Amazon um, for sure. You know, the reviews are there. Un people understand what they're buying. Um, they're buying stuff on Amazon anyway. So it's, it's much easier for them um, when you're just going on to a site just to buy a couple of boxes, especially when you have so much to do and life is insane. What's interesting is that during COVID, it really shut everything down. Sure. And you know, at this point we're on Instacart and doing really well on Instacart and then we launched this movie night kit on our on our D2C platform, um, which really allowed consumers to find it, right? Because sure. they're not shopping in grocery stores. So I think that it's an interesting dynamic when you're starting a business because you know, you have to really be ready to adapt and pivot if something's not working, as you know. There is a dominant story mm -hmm. in the direct to consumer space that you have to be a brand that drives your own sales. Yep. That you have to be a brand that drives your own community mm -hmm. and that you have to be able to do this without the support of all these other merchants yep. because otherwise it's not an investable business. Yeah. You still take it on investment. How yeah. much have you raised? So I would say 20 something million. And you've done that without sort of the same old D2C playbook. Yep. 
Why do you think it's worked for investors to believe in this business? It's the brand that we're trying to build um, and what we stand for. I mean, anyone could come in and do exactly what we're doing, right? Um, but in the earlier really years, we knew that we wanted to be storytellers and can emotionally connect to our consumers, whether that was at the farmer's market or doing demos um, or meeting with our retail partners. It was always about what we were trying to do, you know, in food, revolutionize food, do things differently, right? Like challenge the status quo, push. Content marketing has to be a big part of expressing these ideas. and. I mean, so much of social media is sharing what we're eating, yep. sharing what we're doing. So talk to me about the content marketing strategy at Quinn. Yeah, so it's changed, right? It's evolved over the last 12 years, but originally it was very, very authentic, like real journey, real founder kind of story. And then we, um, in the middle years, we were getting a lot of pressure to really lean into more of kind of manufactured communication which I'm clearly so against. Like, that's just not who I am at all. Meaning just very polished very marketing Very polished, um, especially as it relates to social content, right, social media content. And so we used agencies to do that, and it, it really did not do well on our platform. What we realized really back in 2019 was to lean into more of, like, authentic Quinn speak of just be real. Right, um, some f bombs are thrown in there, some curse words. Again, going back to like we we use real food, right? Um, be authentic, stay true to your brand, and don't be don't try and be someone who you're not. And I think that's what we really, really, truly realized over, over the long haul. Because a lot of brands come out and they want to be you know perfect, and our whole thing is like no, we're not perfect, like we're progress over perfection, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so that's really just what we've leaned into. I don't wanna miss the importance of the in-person demos, but then how have you been able to transfer the knowledge, the learning of in-person demos to online consumers and helping them understand no scary stuff in this yeah. bag. So we do a lot of video content um, and that some of them like is, you know, they can be 10 seconds, they can be 30 seconds, they can be three seconds, but it's really always showcasing that bag and then against another product, right? And I, I never really wanted to bring in the other product because I didn't want to be kind of a hater. And then there was a point where like, we kind of need to start calling out the competition so people understand that we're completely different. And it wouldn't say, you know, Orville or Jolly Time, it would just have a bag. Mm -hmm. This this versus Quinn. Yes. Um, the scary stuff versus no scary stuff. Yes. And so there's a lot of, you know, content around that um, and then you know having kids kind of make it their own and pour their stuff on so it's just it's really keeping it real and it's not scary you've seen it all what are you most excited about in the space right now there's so much fun stuff coming in um, so much innovation happening within this category um, but what really gets me excited is that seeing my product on the shelf for 12 years is is pretty amazing I mean the stats around um, really just surviving this long is pretty rare. Um, but really just um, the food industry is changing. So it is changing for the better. And when we started this back in 2010, um, it was pretty dire and depressing. The lack of transparency, um, the lack of innovation, the lack of clean and healthy items um, for, your, for yourself and your family really was very far, few and far between. And right now, I mean, there's such a plethora of products that, that really um, just keep coming out on the marketplace, um, but for the better, because the smaller brands are setting the standards for the larger big CPG companies um, to learn you know, from. So I think there's, there's so much good happening in the industry, uh, especially when you know, it connects to agriculture as well. Um, so I'm, I'm feeling really optimistic about the food industry. If you learned something from Christy today, I would love for you to like this video, subscribe to this channel, and if you want to build a hundred year brand, you definitely want to take some of the advice from this episode and run with it with your brand. Christy, this is your shot to tell the world where they can buy oh my some gosh. Quinn snacks. So look at that camera over there. That camera. And tell that the people. Camera. Okay, um, Whole Foods, Target, Walmart, Kroger, Thrive, Hive, Hungry Root, pretty much any natural store, Sprouts, um, and I'm probably forgetting a lot of others, but. Thank you. <laughs> Google Quinn Snacks and buy some yeah, exactly. from a retailer that you like online. 100%. Thank you for being Thank here, you Christine. so much. Thanks for having me. This is great. Fun.